Okay, okay, just watch this. Watch it and try not to have your mind blown. Your brain just burst because it's assistive touch and it's coming to the Apple Watch. It uses the motion sensors, the gyroscope, the accelerometer in tandem with the optical heart rate sensor and then applies just a ton of on-device machine learning to figure out the subtle muscle and tendon movements in your arm so that you can control the Apple Watch with a clench or double clench of your fist or a pinch of your fingers or just basic rotations. It's meant for people with limb differences or issues with motor function, but like every accessibility and inclusivity feature, it's really for everyone. Everyone with an injury or holding a child or of course, one day wielding their Iron Man augmented reality HUD, which is all anyone in my timeline can seem to see in all of this. And what's extra exciting about this is that Apple normally doesn't pre-announce new features. They would wait for June 7th, the WWC 2021 keynote and show them off as part of Watch OS 8 iOS 15, iPadOS 15, macOS 12, but they're doing it now to coincide with Global Accessibility Awareness Day. And I am entirely here for it because there's eye tracking support, which is starting with the iPad and is gonna work integrated with made for iPhone eye tracking accessories so that the iPad's cursor will just follow your gaze as you look across the screen and then perform an action like a tap when and if you stop and stare at something. Also improvements for voiceover for images. So if you can't see what's in a photo, your iPhone, for example, can describe it to you and not just sunset, but now your friend Georgia standing in the park at sunset, things that are just much more specific and meaningful to you. And you'll be able to use markup to add your own even more personalized descriptions as well. And microphone support is being added to the made for iPhone hearing aids program to be able to take calls, do FaceTimes or Zooms, all with that one single next generation hearing aid. You'll also be able to layer in balanced, bright or dark noise or nature sounds like ocean, rain or streams over background audio to just take the edge off, to stay focused, to stay calm, to avoid distractions, to avoid discomfort. It'll even mix or duck under other audio or alerts so it can just be there always steady, stable whenever you need it to be like a big comforting hug for your ears. And there'll be sound actions for switch controls, which means zero dependency on the actual physical controls. You'll be able to mouth things like clicks, pops, eeps instead and app specific customizations for display and text sizes for everything from color blindness to low vision. And in Memoji, oxygen tubes, cochlear implants and soft helmets so everyone can better see themselves as themselves. And I love all of this and Apple's accessibility team so much because they work so always to make every device work better for everyone, not just with features like Smart Inverse or Cursor for iPad, which started in accessibility and ended up as dark mode or in the magic trackpad, or maybe gesture control for Apple Watch will one day actually end up in VR or AR, whatever. But we're all only ever one sports injury or accident away from needing these accessibility features as is any given day, just as many people in the community do every day. So thank you, all of you, for everything you do. And with just everything we're hearing about accessibility and even spatial audio for Apple Music now, I just cannot wait to see what we're gonna get on June 7th at the WWC keynote. So just drop kick that subscribe button and bell so you don't miss any of it.